Hello, good day everyone. This is your, uh, this is Dr. Nakhan Mukherjee, the psychologist, psychotherapist, speech and language therapist. And I have an amazing guest, Veronica, uh, today with me. And uh, this is the brand new show with the name of Mava Family, the Mava Family Show. And uh, we just uh, released one or two couple of episodes before. That was one or two minute episode. But uh, we just delayed this because um, in Mava Family, there was an important event that was Alexander's birthday. And uh, they have to focus on that. And uh, the other member of Mava family, uh, uh, Marcus, he was uh, also busy in a lot of things. And like he also launched his own show. And that is the is also going to launch her own show. But today we are going to talk about very important thing, which was, um, that happened very recently. And uh, as you all know that uh, Autism Lady is all about uh, speaking the truth. And she want to share a lot of things with us. And um, we, are, we will go to continue uh, recording these episodes for you people to um, to say a lot of thing to you to talk to you even if you want a part of that so you can also join us in this and please just message me or message uh, our uh, veronica but uh, let me talk to her first and we will uh, share our detail later on thank you so much veronica for having us today uh, it was a hectic week for you i would say hectic month for you actually so how are you feeling today I'm feeling good. I'm just be um, beginning to reset a little bit and kind of regain my focus after the um, uh, past couple of days that I've had the experience with the um, cross disability conference that was put on by our local um, Arkansas State Independent Living Council. Mm -hmm. So just kind of taking some time to reboot. Mm -hmm. um, I've got to uh, resume my graduate courses for my master's in two weeks. Um, so just rebooting, refocusing. So it, there's, there's a lot of, you know, uh, processes going inside your mind. And uh, that was by the way, how was the experience that you have your both of son with you and both of son have to speak in their disability conference? How was that experience? Um. <laughs> in the very beginning because this started on Sunday the 7th uh, and ended on Tuesday the 9th mm -hmm. Alexander's birthday was the Monday the 8th so um, up, upon uh, getting to the hotel this was held at the uh, at our Delta Hotel by the Marriott here in Little Rock Arkansas and the beginning was a little uh, disappointing. Um, I felt hidden agenda from the agency's director. I felt uh, a lack of kindness uh, from the from the executive director and some of her team. Uh, my my feelings were hurt. I felt a little used in the beginning. I didn't know exactly how to handle it. It brought me to the point of tears and I had to um, regroup after shedding a few tears and talking to a couple of people. And I had to um, put my mama bear pants on and make this about Alexander for me because um, I did not, not want him to feel mm -hmm. the energy that I was going through. And that's what you do as, as a parent, you know, and, and, and even more so for a parent of a child with special and additional needs. Mm -hmm. So I sucked it up. Alexander followed through with doing his third speech ever. He did, but this was his first welcome. So he did the welcome. And then my other son, that is Alexander's brother from another mother, um, autism activist Marcus Leonardo Boyd, uh, was the... Um, the the AM AM motivational speaker keynote speaker, and I, I my I, then my feelings were my emotions were up again because one he was expected to speak for an hour, and then two he was not compensated his worth. Um, this is a person that is a globally known activist. He's come through a lot to build his brand. And when I talk about, I felt used, I would have never asked him to speak for his little brother if I would have thought he was going to be taken advantage of financially. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Um, With that being said, I will forever be trying to make that up to him in some way. But I will say this, overall, even after the disappointment initially uh, from this agency, I will say overall, I was able to share Alexander's story with a couple of um, other providers that were present and a couple of other individuals and companies that were very interested in both Marcus's story and Alexander's story. So we did make a couple of good connections overall that we're hoping to follow through uh, with some potential um, genuine agendas mm -hmm. for those of special needs and those with autism. So uh, let, uh, let us uh, tell us about the uh, amazing decoration because I have seen the videos and the cake was amazing. And, uh, yes. you know, I have seen the video that there was small little, you know, tag of, on a, every, yes. every table. So let us tell us about the uh, the whole decoration, because that event was yes. about well, I'm, Alexander birthday. If, if yes. you know, because well, that I am a birthday. Yes. Well, I am a, a member of um, I, uh, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. And my line sister, we pledged together in spring of 04. And uh, she actually was my event designer and she did a fabulous job bringing the whole whole idea back to Alexander's birthday. I was so impressed with how her decorations turned out. Um, and she, she gave me some positive energy that I really needed at the time. Uh, so I do thank her so much. Her name is Monique Freeman. And she's with um, Moniche Designs. She did a fabulous job, and I really needed her energy that day, and she came through for me. That was uh, the, uh, the whole uh, decoration was amazing. And we have yeah. seen the, uh, uh, you know, the speech of Marcus. That was amazing, I would say. Uh, yeah. But uh, I think we would ask him to talk more about experience because uh, when you're actors, it doesn't mean that you have, all have to share positive, positive, positive. You have to yes. show the negativity around you and how you overcome that negativity. And to be yes. this emotion is very important. Just keeping it to yourself because it's going to drain you inside. You're just, you know, it's like uh, you're slowly, slowly, uh, you know, uh, ending yourself inside. So the emotions yes. need to, because these emotions are consuming you inside. So because you, you already know that I'm a therapist, so I just encourage all people to talk about their well, experiences. I talked, I talked to you, I think, that Tuesday morning. Uh, no, that Wednesday morning after the birthday. Exactly. Um, so you that helped, too, to kind of bring me a little bit more closure uh, for you to uh, recommend that we talk about it on the show. Exactly. So I'm very thankful for that, talking to you early in the morning, um, Wednesday. That helped, too. You know, you, I'm, you, you only trust. I, I'm a very trusting person, and I lead with my heart. And just some of the circumstances that happened initially, they were totally unforeseen. I didn't see that coming. Um, I'm highly disappointed in that effort. But what I am planning to do, I have a couple of classes that I'm taking with my grad program. And I'm going to use the experience uh, and write one of my research papers around this experience. So this will be uh, one of my uh, projects in one of my grad classes. So we will also expect Marcus to come forward and talk about because we all the time, I have seen him talking, like motivating other people, but it's not, yeah. he don't talk about what he feels inside. I think he, he has to start he talking about the way you talk about, uh, it's important. Yes, and I wanna say this, I mean, and I'm not speaking for Marcus, I'm just speaking on what I saw. Exactly. Marcus was so heartbroken when they did not pay him his worth, when he was not compensated for his worth. Um, I don't know what fell through the cracks because I don't discuss his personal, I mean, his business and his team, um, but he, he was heartbroken. He was heartbroken and I was heartbroken for him because that falls back on me. Yeah. Because, when they, you know, and, and I take that seriously. You know, I take my character, I take my reputation very seriously. And if I would have thought that he was going to be taken advantage of, I never would have uh, uh, offered the, given the opportunity 
to the Arkansas uh, State Independent Living Council to even be made privy to his experience. Now, I am very happy that he was able to make some connections, but for at that moment, those connections meant nothing when he was devalued exactly. by the agency that brought him in. You know, so he's still working through that. And when I saw him the next day, I could see he was still drained when I saw him the next we day. We have seen his do and do like the moment the pictures I have I shared with you yesterday. Yeah. You have seen that yeah. energy was not uh, the first show that he did and the second show when he did with you, that was different show. But uh, yeah. I think you are there for him. His mother is there and his mother is going to support him in any way and yeah. let him speak and you know, going through all this experience. Because, um, okay, tell me one thing. I would also like to know that. How was that setting? Did you, uh, you stayed at home and you went to that conference and come back? What was the uh, circumstances yeah, around that? Uh, what was that? Did you stay over there? Did you stay at your home and attended that conference? Yes. What I did was... Yeah, what I did, well... Um, and Alexander Secret Incorporated funded that. Um, but I had to do that so that Alexander would be able to be on the grounds of what was taking place so that I could properly prepare him mm -hmm. for what his steps of what he needed to do to participate. Exactly. But when I got to the hotel, <laughs> the agency that put on the conference it's like the executive director just completely for, just ignored the fact of the prep work that has to be for Alexander because Alexander is pervasive level of care and he's clinically declared nonverbal. So even in doing his welcome speech, I have to have time to prepare him in a real time setting, which means we have to practice the speech, which was like five sentences that I created for him. And then we have to practice it in the real space that he's going to do it in. And this person that put on the conference, bless her heart, she knows this, but it's like all of that went out the window once the attention was brought in, you know, and it was more about impressing the guests as opposed to uh, being supportive of why we were here, which we were here for the cross disability and those that have different disabilities and those that serve those with disabilities but it's like that went out the window i mean she and i are sorority sisters as well and my vibe from her was totally not good i mean it was as though she i felt like she treated me as if i was less than um that she just used us for the attention of alexander's secret being present i don't think that was a good look and then i learned too from the hotel itself that this is this is not the first time that she's behaved this way with other individuals in other conferences that she's put on or other workshops that she's put on. And so I guess I was just so surprised, but the hotel wasn't surprised at all because she's done this before as far as that behavior, that negative uh, feedback or that, that off energy. Um, but I just could, I can't handle, I try to stay as positive as I can with my situation I try to exude positivity because I like for my son to be around positivity. I try to turn negatives into positives because life is too short to be bitter. Um, life is, too, we're supposed to create more leaders. As leaders, we're to create more leaders. And in this situation with this young lady, I feel like, I felt like my personal experience is that she wants followers. She was dictating and micromanaging as opposed to leadership. And when you have a team, your team should be so strong and your leadership should be so fluent that nobody knows who the leader is. And in this situation, she wanted to make sure that everyone knew that she was the leader. And that's the that's the vibe that she gave. And I didn't like it, but I've got through it for my son, for my sons, for both Marcus and Alexander. Um and like I said, we did make some good contacts overall. I'm looking forward to the potential that that's going to bring. Uh, but it was the beginning of this was not good for me. I, I I was to the point of tears, and I was ready to throw in the towel. So, um, yeah. So and then I, but I sucked it up because this was it, this was about my son. It was about Marcus making a debut here in Arkansas with the conference. 
Um, but a lot of it, I regretted even allowing this to be around my son's birthday because that's not what I represent. I, re I represent team building. I represent leadership. I represent positivity. I represent acceptance and inclusion and empowerment. And I did not feel that that was embraced initially. Okay, uh, I would also like to know that uh, there were other participants as well in that conference. It was not just uh, Marcus and Alexandra with uh, some different or additional lead. There are other participants as yeah. well because I have seen the um, I have seen that uh, speech of Marcus also, and he was talking to different people, and that was him who was making alive that whole conference. So, what was yeah. the other con participants feeling about that whole perspective? Because everybody could get affected from the same thing because they are very sensitive people. It doesn't uh, a lot normal of people doesn't mean do. that you know normal people doesn't mean that they don't uh, understand what is happening around and how they are treating in that certain place. Well, what we what we first need to understand too at this conference this this was a this was a conglomerate of service providers, state agencies, and your case managers. We had case managers there, and then there were other vendors that were there in support of the conference itself. I think it's very important to understand too, even um, with having all of us there as a conglomerate being on the same mission, what well, people have to understand that just because we, a lot of us represent the same mission uh, from a business perspective or, or when people are on the outside looking in, people don't really understand what really goes on on the inside of those doors, on the inside of those agencies and some of the discrepancy that we put up with. And then we have to, you know, working with the social injustice, you know, dealing with that, dealing with corruption. There's a lot going on here in the States. And I felt like my experience, my progression, how far I've come, um, with autism, except from autism awareness to autism acceptance and fighting for my son's inclusion. Um, I felt belittled on that first day. I felt, I, 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 I wanted to, I wanted to throw in the towel. I wanted to go home and not come back. And it took a long conversation with a young lady that's a member of the board of that agency, Arkansas State Independent Living Council. Bless her heart, she's Miss Wheelchair Arkansas here. Um, it took talking to her to get me to stay. So, and I'm glad she did. I mean, she listened to my tears and I, I discussed some things with, um, like I said, with the hotel management as well, uh, um, because I, I just, I was so hurt. I was so hurt. And I'm sure uh, I'm here, but I made it. I made it through. I made it through for Alexander, uh, and I made it through for some other individuals because there are going to be some. A lot of people are afraid to speak of the the bad part of things that happen in our lives, especially when we're having to take care of those with special needs or additional needs. But it's not always rainbows and butterflies. Exactly. It's a lot of rocky road that you have okay. to deal with. It's a lot of taking licks that you don't want to take, you yeah. know, for the better, for the greater good. Uh, and I definitely did that this week. And, you know, uh, there's a lot of experiences, a lot of parents are facing out there, maybe because of the specific, uh, you know, they have some child or they have, they have, they belong to some community and things like that. Like, like I just, uh, yeah, day before yesterday, I shared the experience with you. Somebody told me that uh, her child was maybe, maybe hardly, he was five or six year old. She, she requested mm -hmm. the mother that please, whenever child come to your home, please uh, call me back. And, and, and by that, she wanted me that what is uh, uh, the child, why she, the why child is going there. So that she get the idea why, why she's attractive to her. Because she was ordered to have that thing at her home. I don't, I don't. But she was so uh, hurt that that lady called to the police that a child is vandalizing my property. Mm -hmm. So that was about a child. So I think we need to speak about these things and over here, we are not even trying to hurt someone, but we are raising a voice about some point, but, some things that we need to change our style, uh, you know, our living style, our uh, dealing with these people. And like I always said, that 
nobody asked them to help them even i maybe a right. mother who is have, facing a child temper tantrum or things like that she may, she might not ask you to help her but just to stay her or it just give a positive vibe or you know just uh, encourage her support her in any way that would help her in, right. in a lot of senses and when we talk about inclusion when we talk about disability when we talk about in acceptance it's not about even people know about disability about autism for so long for many years years and years and years and i think we don't yes. need even no, don't don't even need to talk about these thing now we have to talk about making different ways to it's time for action action it's action. time for action it's time for action that how yes. we're going to change the life how we're going to change the society how we're going to change the living easy for them how, exactly. we, going to change the how are we going to change the that's system it. that forces us into oppression yeah. and that's that's something to talk about these agencies and the system as a whole is so corrupt that this is a billion dollar industry um but the vulnerable that are that the that this funding comes around i think people people are are mis are miscommunicated the information of this being state local or federal funding but what people under, need to understand is these are your taxpayer dollars exactly. that are being manipulated right under our nose, right? So the government is not going to give you the full, the full information of how they acquire these funds and how they're supposed to be used and how policies are written. If you don't know, you just don't know. And I'm just one of those that I took the effort to learn the rules to the game of politics and money. Um, and I'm still at the bottom of the pyramid on it but i know a lot more than most know and i'm willing to speak out about that because it's it's very wrong how we how we treat our most vulnerable of the world it's very exactly. wrong exactly and you, you know it's not about the disability is in every population autism yes. is in every population disability if you say disability every population is vulnerable so you don't get this idea that with all you are just treating all of them same way Yes, you're doing this and you can't, to everyone. Because each each case is an individual case. Exactly. So you can't so you can't treat all with a cookie cutter method. There's no cookie cutter method yes. that works for everybody. Exactly. You have to look at the individual and meet that individual's needs. Exactly. Because my my Alexander's needs are not the same as Marcus's needs. Exactly. And Marcus's needs are not the same as Alexander, exactly. but it was so good to see them together. Exactly. Um, I was really happy about seeing them together. And there were a couple of photographs where Alexander was actually reaching out to Marcus physically with his hands. And, and um, Marcus would, could verbally tell Alexander if Alexander wandered, he would call his name and say, Alexander, come back. And Alexander would turn around and come back. So they created a little bond. So that was a positive out of all that as well. Exactly. And, um, uh, and I would say that Alexander is growing well, uh, amazingly because, you know, I have, I'm tracking his uh, progress. <laughs> and, you know, I have yeah. seen, I have seen the, the, the interview you had with Marcus and the way he came and he greeted him. That was amazing. Then his performance at Drum Circle, that is also very positive. Yeah. So overhead, mm -hmm. I think, we just don't want to make other people unhappy. We just want, and people can learn the way you learn, the way I learn, the way Marcus and the way everybody could learn from our experiences. So I think yeah. the whole uh, uh, discussion, I would like to, you know, uh, some of this discussion like that, everybody could learn. And uh, we need to talk about these things and we need to find a way to work together. And I think that yeah. is the only way to survive in this society. Grouping is not a good thing, you know. Uh, uh, sc scratching things it, stuff like that. It's no not a good thing. Person, and no one person should try to take leadership or rule over people. Exactly. You know, this is about coming together in unison. Exactly. Do what's best for the greater good of everyone. Exactly. Whether it's the therapist, whether it's the doctors, whether it's the caseworkers, whether it's the direct aides and, and direct support professionals and the parents and the the, uh, the, the self-advocates themselves, you know, the, the disabled person themselves, all of us should, by now, all of us should be working together. Exactly. And, and it's like, as we get to know more about this situation and what's going on, there is, there's even more divide, exactly. right? There, there's not, there's, there should be more unison, not division. Exactly. So thank yeah. you so much for your time today. That was, uh, 
you could say a kind of you know uh, i would say that that was kind of new information i would say or i would say that it was more like you know giving other people uh, information that they can change also if they try to get and try to know your side that this this is how you felt that and next time maybe they cannot do this with other people so on this note i would like to say a thank you to you and to the to our the one who would listen to us thank you so much everyone see you in the next uh, episode my pleasure thank you Bye.